Okay, let's go for the next one, please. So show that sine x change in x, uh, this product uh, may be written as like that. So sometimes, so it's uh, easier to do from the right to left or left to right, you know, it depends on the situation. But in this case, actually, we can do it in that order. This means that, yeah, so the, this is a proof question. So the trigonometric proof. So for trigonometric proof, what we need to do is, so let's say show that this thing, right, this is the product thing. Sine x tangent x means sine x multiplied by tangent x. So we need to use, we need to have some tools and always keep in mind the end. So the end looks like this. I was thinking of that. Line. So the first uh, trick to do here is to rewrite the tangent x. Why do you want to rewrite the tangent x? It's because if you look at the final answer, it doesn't have a tangent x at all. So keeping the end in view, so we rewrite tangent x as, aha, okay, no, no, yes, but tangent x is equals to sine x divided by cos x. So the, the rule, so the relationship between sine cos tangent. So therefore here we can write sine x over cos x. And then when you multiply it out, so it becomes sine square x over cos x. So it looks like the denominator is taking shift. That means we don't change the denominator, keeping the end in mind. Always compare with the final there, the top there. So from this side, now I realize that this one, we can use an identity, a Pythagorean identity, we say, of the, uh, what do you say? Trigonometric equivalent. So sine square x plus cos square x is always equals to one. So that means we can substitute that there. So we would get the numerator to change using that. Huh? So we can just rewrite this. So that means sine square x would be equal to one minus cos square x. Oh, so this will, that's why it changes the numerator. One minus cos square x. And the whole thing is over cos x. Done. So when you end the proof, it's exactly the same. That's what we wanted to, then we just say QED. Uh, when we see the symbol for end of proof. Okay, so that's how we did this uh, two, now question two, the first part. Huh? Okay, let's say it first, two, one, let's say here. Mm -hmm. Let's just give a break of that. Lah. Okay, no worries. Okay, now we clear all drawings and we're going to do the B part. So what we do is just writing this part so we can write on it. Okay, let's start with the second part. Hand salt equation. So hand salt means the English word uh, itself gives a hint that we have to use the earlier part. Hence solved equation. Hence means we have to use this part. To use the equivalence that this is equal to that. So that means, so I just write this first, the given equation that we want to solve. So two sine x tangent x equals to three. Okay, that's the first part now. Okay, now how do we go about it? Just bring a bit of extra space just in case we need it. Aha, so pull it up here, let's say. So the two sine x tangent x part, so let's say put a bracket. If you look at it carefully, the sine x tangent x part can be written as this thing. So what we're gonna do is one minus to substitute accordingly, cos square x over cos x, and then this is equals to three. Okay, that's one step. Now what we need to do, we need to simplify things. So we rewrite it as two bracket, and um, on the left, there's still the, remove the denominators. That's how we simplify the first part. And then here it goes to three. And then you move the cos x becomes a numerator on the other side, cross multiplies, and we could say like that. And then you can easily see that it's turning into something else, which is a quadratic equation. So this and this times, as you multiply, just take note, this becomes what? Two times one, two. Two cos square x equals to three cos x. So the ability to recognize that this is turning into a quadratic equation. So it's like bringing to the right everything. So negative becomes positive, cos square x, you know. The three is already a positive on the right, so maintain. And then the two is minus two. Of course, we don't write it in that order, but that's the order naturally here. So we rewrite it as two cos square x 
plus three cos x minus two equal to zero. So we know that the, um, what do we say? The cos x is just a, uh, what is the word? It's just a, like a real number. It's just a real number. So therefore we can use a substitution just, if the substitution is actually just to help us see, it's not necessary, but if I write it, let's say substitution, uh, let y equals to cos x, then what happens? So the, the last equation from the last line there, uh -huh, what happens to that? So you must replace it as, uh, if y is cos x, then how do you write cos square x? Cos square x is just a shorthand to mean cos x. <laughs> yeah, sorry, y square. So it's just a quantity, right? It's just a square of that. Okay, so uh, to do that, you know, I just want to make this clear that for our type check. Data, just open it back to click something so I can read it when it's locked in. Okay, so here we are. So what happens is, so this equation becomes now 2y squared plus 3y minus 2 equals to 0. So it turns out to be a quadratic, and just like before, the earlier question above earlier. So what we do is, so let's charge this. Try to actually hit the off of that. <laughs> the internet didn't have to reconnect. Sorry. Okay, so we go to the EQN, use the calculator because at this level you have a calculator is programmable. A 570 code at the top, usually for such calculators uh, for an exam reference. So the A is 2, then it equals to the B is 3, and the C is negative 2. Okay, so when you get 0 0.5, Obviously, the fraction. So you kind of like um, playing around with the calculator. Please understand the calculator outputs the roots. So you can just write the roots like that. Roots means the numbers to make the uh, equation is zero. Huh? So y is half, or the answer means looks like that. Like use the fraction, please, not the decimals, because you can't rewrite that. Not say cannot, you know, like just saying a colloquial or informal way of saying it. Okay, so this is negative two. So y is negative two. Remember the letter is y, huh? So if everything is correct there, so we rewrite it. We're writing it in reverse, please take note. Writing in reverse means uh, just multiply it as, let's say two y equals to one, send y plus two. The idea is to make it zero. I move the, what do we say? The, um, what is the, the coefficient? Uh, sorry, denominator, we got the coefficient and all that, bring to the left like that. Meaning that the two rate numbers at the end, two y minus one, and y plus two becomes the factorization. So you can just use the calculator to factorize. We have to struggle with the, you know, the difficulty in that. So we write it forward as though we're solving it forwardly. So it doesn't really matter at this level, I think. So y is half or y is negative two. We just take the calculator values at the top there and just write it down. Okay, so far we wrote this. Okay, how do we solve it? So now we need the y is not the original uh, thing. It's just the, substitution. So cos x was what is y, cos x equals to half, or now cos x, we replace back the cos, eh? it's negative two. But there's no such thing as cos x is negative two. So absurd values must be rejected because uh, this one just can give a reason with that. Cos x is, then you can either write it this way, between one and negative one. Sometimes people write with the modulus symbol. Eh? So the modulus symbol, because cos only takes a value of between, uh, negative as uh, negative one to one, but if your modulus is zero to one, I can. Of course, modulus x is less or equals to one. Same in the sign. Only tangent has no limits. Okay, so therefore this we reject impossible. Okay, that's all. We just need to give a reason like that mathematically. And then we proceed on this side to the okay. So what do I mean by proceed on this side? So I'm using a box now so that we know that part. So the cos x is now half. And uh, always look at the, uh, sometimes students will ask, you know, whether we need to do in radians or in degrees at this level. So always look at the given range. When you look at the given range, you can see that it's given degrees. That itself will be a very good indicator whether the equation numbers also, if there's any coefficient or anything, it's in radians or degrees. Okay, let's take note of this trick. But usually there's also another convention where you see the pi there appearing means it's most likely radian. Huh? Okay, that's another tip. Huh? So now we have cos x is half. So we must use the special angle property or we just take the calculator, hit a cos of half. We should get x is 60 degrees. So that 60 degrees is called the acute angle. So the acute angle, in other words, if you want to write a working, it's not necessary, just for learning sake. Huh? A cos, a cos is cos negative one 
of half, the old way of saying it, lah. So you get 60 degrees. Uh -huh. Or 60 is half. Okay. Now, how do we uh, get all the values within the range of 0 to 360? Okay, just a challenge now. So to solve for that, what you need to do is, what we need is a little bit of this uh, quadrants, what is called as a quadrant now. Eh? Okay, in this quadrant now, what we need to do is the 60 degrees, because uh, always check and see whether it's positive. Cos x is positive, half. So we do the CAST, which is the, uh, when each of it is positive, cos is positive in the uh, quadrant at the bottom here, and uh, all is up there. Then sign here and just like T for tangent. Eh? Okay, these are the shorthands. I mean, C is talking about cos, when cos is positive, just put a loose way of saying it like that. Okay, understand tangent is positive in only that part. I mean, the rest are negative. A is all. A signifies all are positive in that quadrant. And the S means only sine is positive in that quadrant. Okay, so the quadrant trick. Lah. So, and therefore, so we have this uh, half. So, cos needs to be positive. So, there are only two places where it's positive. So, into that, we draw the two lines. Okay, two reference lines. Lah. So, now based on this reference line, what I want to mark is the acute angle. So the acute angle is 60 degrees. So 60 degrees and all that acute angle is always from the horizontal axis. Now the tip there. So even if you forget, just imagine the horizontal here is this side. The horizontal here is this side. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's always going to be measured like that. So that's a 60 degrees. And here is also 60 degrees likewise. So 60 here, 60 here. And then we take a anti-clockwise move because the zero degree is defined from here. Okay, you may wonder, deeper things I'm not talking very detailed, showing more exam style, but sometimes I'll comment, especially if there's a question or you want to ask more, just please chat, just write it down there. Uh, things like, you ever wondered why is it anti-clockwise? Uh, these are the deeper things in mathematics. And uh, why, not we, uh, why not is clockwise is uh, positive? Uh, that means like zero, uh, 90 degree here, why can't we draw the other way? Why is it called negative side? It's because they are linking. Because these things you must understand when in uh, history of maths a bit, when they discovered like René Descartes, right? he discovered coordinate geometry. And then these guys, uh, who discovered this, I don't know who discovered trigonometry was there since ancient times. So there's no particular, uh, this thing, except for the signs of the quadrants and the negative half, you know, those kind of extensions, which is kind of like due to coordinate geometry, because the way the quadrants are defined, positive, negative, and all that, so that is why it becomes anti-clockwise in that sense. Okay, so this is 60 degrees like this. Okay, and then the other one, let's say we're going to the other line. So you need to go anti-clockwise until you reach that line. Ta-da! So you can see easily that the two red lines now signify the solution visually. So that means that X equals to the first red line only went up to 60 degrees. On the second red line, that's why in some books they teach us as like a formula. So when it's in that quadrant, but it's not actually a formula, as you can see, the whole turn is 360. So we take 360 degrees minus that extra gap, the 60, lah, which is taken. Uh, so instead of memorizing, when you can understand that like that, then you can get the two relevant answers, which are x equals 60 degree or x equals to 300 degrees. So these are the answers. This one, now. Huh? If there's another root, just in case, like in here, we rejected the root because there's, uh, what do we say? The root is, does it make sense? Uh, because negative two is out of the range of possibilities for the value of cost. If there was, if there was another root, please take note that that would mean that you have to do the same thing. Uh, and if there was any valid solutions there, that means there will be a total of four solutions instead of the two solutions in this case. All right.